Hey guys, what's going on? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Uh, usually on Mondays, I devote my videos to talking about X-Men related things, either theories or topics that I want to discuss, or I will do a review on some X-Men storyline. Uh, today, I wanted to do something a little bit different. On Saturday, it was revealed, no, Friday, it was revealed that uh, Darwin Cook, comic book artist and legend, uh, that he was suffering from cancer and that he was in a pretty late stage of cancer as far as I understand. And then on Saturday, it was revealed that he had passed away. So I think that uh, his family had revealed uh, to everybody that he was suffering from cancer when they were pretty sure that he didn't have long to live. And so here lately, a lot of people have been honoring Darwin Cook by posting some of their favorite pictures that he drew or uh, some covers that he did or talking about some of their favorite stories that he did, like uh, DC The New Frontier or the Parker adaptations in comics. Uh, I wanted to do sort of the same thing, uh, but since I do my Monday videos on X-Men related stuff, I wanted to talk about a very brief X-Men story that Darwin Cook illustrated. This is the Wolverine and Dupe two-issue miniseries. It is called The Pink Mink. Uh, this is written by Peter Milligan and drawn by Darwin Cook. And uh, basically, uh, the story here is a pretty simple uh, sort of uh, heist escapade story, I guess you could say. Uh, there is this uh, feather boa type thing that is a pink feathery... Uh, scarf thing. Uh, it is kept in a glass cage and then it escapes and then uh, this science lab that had this thing kept in a glass cage, uh, they hire Wolverine to go and bring it back for them. And then uh, hilarity ensues. Uh, somehow Dupe gets involved uh, because uh, this pink mink is causing uh, these people uh, to turn into these pink zombies and so Dupe is kind of uh, trying to help Wolverine to kind of keep this zombie outbreak from getting bigger. Uh, we find out that there is whenever the pink mink is uh, mixed with oxygen, uh, it releases this chemical uh, that makes people who see the pink mink actually see this pink lady. And so Wolverine sees the lady. Uh, at one point, uh, Wolverine thinks that Dupe is going crazy and suffering from a disease called Code X, which was a thing uh, that was in Peter Milligan's X-Force and X-Static series, basically a disease that mutants suffer that makes them go insane and uh, makes them extremely dangerous. And so uh, Wolverine thinks that Dupe is suffering from Code X. Meanwhile, Dupe thinks that Wolverine is suffering from Code X and so uh, their respective people, uh, Professor X is telling Wolverine, hey, listen, if he is suffering from Code X, you know what you have to do. You have to kill him. And then uh, Dupe's allies in Ecstatics, they're telling Dupe, listen, if Wolverine is really suffering from Code X, you have to kill him. And so uh, these two are working together to try and find the pink meek and the pink lady if she exists and stop uh, all these people from becoming pink zombies while also they're uh, contemplating stabbing each other in the back because they don't know if they can trust each other. They don't know if their longtime friend because Wolverine and Duke have a really long friendship with each other just like how Wolverine has a long friendship with a lot of other mysterious characters uh, like in the early 90s it was revealed that Wolverine uh, had a very long history with Cable it's that sort of thing uh, these two have known each other for a very long time and are buddies but they don't know if they can trust each other uh, so it's a kind of uh, enjoyable but at the same time uh, the stakes are really high and it's very intense in places uh, but it doesn't forget what it's trying to be and what it's trying to be is a really fun, enjoyable story. Uh, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Uh, it's very hilarious throughout the whole thing. Uh, there are many funny moments in this. Uh, I won't go into every single thing because that would make this video way too long. Uh, the art here, uh, not surprising anyone at all, is fantastic. Darwin Cook's art was always really wonderful. Uh, his art kind of reminds me a little bit of Bruce Timm's art from uh, the DC Animated Universe, like uh, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, the Justice League cartoons. Uh, and I think Darwin Cook actually got his start either on the animated series or Batman Beyond. Uh, he actually started working on one of those cartoons uh, before The New Frontier came out, which uh, The New Frontier was kind of his... Uh opening act, if you will. I think that's when everyone in the world suddenly sat up and took notice of Darwin Cook. Uh, so, basically, if you hadn't heard of this story and you're interested, maybe uh, after Darwin Cook passed away, you're realizing that you don't know that much about him, or you haven't read as much of his work as you would like, and you're thinking that you'd like to check this out, I'm pretty sure that these two issues are collected in one of the Ecstatics trade paperbacks. But the reason that I'm reviewing these two in single issue form is because I do not have any of the Ecstatics trade paperbacks. I only have a trade paperback for uh, the X-Force series by Peter Milligan and Mike Allred. I think I have 
two trade paperbacks for that run, uh, but I don't have any of the Ecstatics trades. So uh, if you were uh, interested in this, uh, go to uncannyxmen.net. I'm pretty sure that they will tell you uh, if these two issues are collected and if they are in what trade they are collected in. Uh, also, I want to take this time really quickly to try and encourage people if you are a fan of some celebrity, it doesn't necessarily have to be in comics, although in this case I am kind of inspired by the death of Darwin Cook to mention this, but if you're a fan of, say, an actor or a writer or a musician, uh, this thing uh, kind of was happening when Prince died about a month ago, if you are a huge fan of somebody in the entertainment industry, be uh, don't be afraid to go ahead and go out there and say, hey, I'm a really big fan of this person's writing or acting or music or art. Don't be afraid to talk about how much you love their stuff because it seems to me anytime somebody in the entertainment industry dies, suddenly everyone in the world starts saying that they were such a huge fan of Prince or Darwin Cook. And that's not a bad thing. I want people to get out there and say, hey, this is a person who is really good. I want to honor them after they died. But let's not forget to honor these people before they died. Uh, that might seem uh, like I'm being a little bit mean, and I'm not trying to be mean. I want people to get out there and say that they were a big fan of Darwin Cook and a big fan of Prince or whatever. But I can't tell you how many people on the internet that I saw after Prince died, they suddenly start talking about how much of a huge fan of Prince they were when before Prince died, I had no idea that they were a fan of Prince. They never talked about Prince. They never in any way mentioned any of Prince's music. Uh, they didn't act like Prince's stuff was a big part of their life and influenced them in any way. The same with Darwin Cook. Before he died, I knew two people online who were big fans of Darwin Cook. Now, suddenly, everyone in the world is talking about how they are such a huge fan of Darwin Cook, and I want people to continue to say he was a great artist, he was a great storyteller, and then in a comics industry, creators are saying he was a great friend. I want people to continue you doing that but guys don't wait until someone is dead to talk about how much you enjoy someone's work or you enjoy that person go ahead and get out there and say that you're a huge fan of this person's music or art or acting or writing or whatever uh, I am bad about this as well uh, I will wait until somebody has passed away before I say hey I was a really big fan of their acting or whatever I remember when Michael Clark Duncan passed away I was just kind of stunned uh, I liked him and everything that I saw him in and then after he died I was kind of like well I didn't realize how much I enjoyed Enjoyed him in everything that I ever saw him in. Even the movies that weren't great, I was like, I still liked him in those things. Like, I still liked him in Daredevil, even though the Daredevil movie isn't the best thing in the world. Uh, so, guys, even though uh, you might be taking some time to honor Darwin Cook, let's also honor uh, some of the people who are still with us. Uh, don't forget that there's still plenty of legends out there, and don't wait until they are gone to talk about how much you miss their work or how much their work means to you. Go ahead and talk about it now. Uh, this might not have been the best place to talk about that, to get that off my chest, but it's something that I felt like needed to be said. Uh, so those are my brief thoughts on the Wolverine Dupe 2 issue miniseries, The Pink Mink. Uh, I hope that you guys liked this video. Uh, if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I do other videos throughout the week. Uh, be sure to check those out as well, uh, and I will see you guys later in the week with some other videos. Have a great rest of the day.